Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. I started this channel to share my love of salmon flies and fly tying. I cover everything from spay flies to salmon flies to uh, artistic flies. I cover techniques. All my flies are step by step so that way you can follow along. I try to give as much detail and specifics as I can throughout the whole process. That way it's much easier to understand but you can also um, try out certain techniques and see certain things that I do. Um, if there's anything that you ever need to know um, or you have a specific question, by all means, shoot me a message. I'd be happy to make a video about it. Um, Mondays, I'll be doing material reviews, everything from all the different pheasants that we use to different hooks, uh, different threads and silks, tinsels, and uh, more things that are used in salmon flies. So, if you guys enjoy the channel and you like a specific video, by all means, please uh, hit the thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed, think about subscribing. That helps out the channel. That helps me out. And leave your notification bell on. That'll let you know when I post a new video. And you'll be able to follow along um, before anybody else. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's get on with it. All right, welcome back to the first video of the year. It is 2024 and it's time to get things started. Took a little break in the beginning, but uh, here we go. Uh, real quick, Material on Mondays will return next week. So a week from today, there will be a, uh, a new Material Mondays video and we'll be starting off with what I call pretty little birds. That'll be uh, Indian Crow, Kotinga, Toucan, uh, some of the things that are a little bit harder to obtain and then I'm going to go through some of the substitutions that we can use um, that are a little bit cheaper and uh, much easier to find. So, that being said, let's get right on with this video. I'm starting off with a Byron Bjork hook. This is a size 70 William Bartley. Here's uh, Byron's information. You guys are interested in uh, obtaining any of his hooks. And as you can see, I've already gone through and uh, attached the gut, which I have all the way back to here. And then the uh, underbody is on there. Just a slight underbody, nothing too thick, nothing too crazy. Now the uh, tag on this is flat silver tinsel. So the flat silver tinsel I am using is Lagartan. And this is really the only flat silver that I can find. Um, I can't find any in for Vivas. Um, hopefully they do have it and I'm going to be able to get some at some point as I do love their products. Um, but for now this will do. This is what I've been using. So we're going to tie this one in. You want to be careful tying it in, especially if you're using a thinner thread. As this uh, flat silver tinsel can be quite sharp along the edges. Okay. So after you tie it in, you want to just flatten out right here, right at the tie-in point. And then start wrapping. You want those wraps to overlap just a little bit. And work your way up. And if you loosen up tension on it just a little bit, you can wind up doing what I just did, and it kind of starts to want to unwrap a little.
Mm -hmm. and this is somewhat of a larger tag. I know it's a bit longer, so I am going to go back just a little bit. Frame going on. Okay, now the tail. Golden pheasant topping. And I'm going for the shape that I had in the last fly, that cape that I had tied. I'm kind of shooting for that shape. those of you that haven't been able to figure it out by my photo, this fly is actually a, going to be a variation of a Greenwell. I really do love the Greenwell and the pattern and um, thought I would do one in a different color. It was actually by request. I've had it mentioned that I and people would like to see a little bit more purple. And I had someone mention a green well, or ask for a green well in purple instead of the blue. And I thought, well, you know what? That would be fantastic. It would look great. I'm really not happy with this hump that's going on right here. This wing might be just a hair too big. And that's okay, when we get to the wing, we can slim it down some if necessary. And I just want to see if it's going to be long enough. I believe so. That tail length, I believe, is pretty good. So, we will leave it at that. Okay, I'm just going to hit that with a little bit of slire. Just to keep that tail in place. Those of you who haven't seen slire, uh, this is the label. It's hard to get in the U.S. Um, it is for sale outside the U.S. Okay, next. There is jungle cop veiling over the tail. So I'm 
just going to pick out a couple of JC nails. I think those will fit in this fly very well. Okay. Just got to find a mate for that one. There we are. Then I want to strip the stems on those, just get the fluff off of there. So what you've got is this. Alright, so if, if you just saw there, the jungle cock nails are starting to kind of split and go away from each other. So what you can do is take the nail and the direction you want the nail to go from how it's going to be mounted, twist that right at the tie-in point. Not so much that you break the stem, but you can twist that just enough. And it should retain that shape. And do the same thing with the other side.
What you have to try to do is get these stems of the two jungle cat feathers, one on either side of that golden pheasant tail stem. And I typically like to tie them in together, but if they don't work, I can try to tie them in one at a time. But doing one at a time creates more thread buildup and can lead to other issues as well. And I'm going to switch out to black because this white spool is just not cutting it. Apologies. That white spool has been bothering me for a while. I think that's going to wind up going in the trash, unfortunately. The only spool of thread I've had to do that. Okay. Though I will admit I was putting a bit of tension on it, but...
There we go. Okay. Remove these. Grab our wax. This uh, this wax that I use is a harder wax. It's uh, Bill Bailey's Cobbler's Wax, and you can get that at FeathersMC.com. Absolutely great stuff. I've been using it for years. Okay, now the butt is some black ostrich charl. Normally, I try to use a smaller ostrich trail but I'm going to use a little bit of a larger one this time it's got a little bit more fluff to it and that's only because this is a larger hook so I want it to look proportionately correct so I'm tying in right on the near side you could tie in on the underside if you like and what I'm going to do is you pull it towards you forward and then straight up and that should align you just right for the hurl Let me just have a look at this really quick, make sure I'm happy with it. Yeah, I like that. Now what I've purposely done here is I've purposely made the tag a little larger and a little bit farther back. And I really want this body to stand out. I want the body to really pop. And you'll see how I have it aligned here. Get my thread back to it. The very end of the butt is just barely at the hook point. And that's how you that's how you want it. Now, I've said in my other videos, you know, that's just kind of a general rule of thumb. Um, for most classics, that's how it is. The butt should be started behind the hook point and end at the hook point. Um, there are instances where that's a little bit different. It depends on the hook style, it depends on the fly, and the typical style of fly that you're tying. Um, but for most married wing flies, this would be the proper way. All right, now we're gonna tie in the ribbing and the um, hackle first. And the ribbing is flat silver tinsel and large oval silver tinsel. Now the large oval that I'm going to use is Lagartin, or excuse me, is Vivas. The flat is again going to be Lagartin.
Here's the Vivus that I'm using with the tag and the model number. And you can find that at a lot of different fly shops. Uh, Melinda's Fly Shop in Elmar, New York has some. Um, you can get it right off of eBay. Um, lots of local fly shops do carry it, so check with them first uh, before ordering overseas or ordering off of big retailers. Kind of help out the little guy, you know? I'll leave, uh, in the description, I'll leave the um, names of the different places that I get my materials from, including Melinda's and her contact information. Okay, so the hackle that I'm using is a um, purple saddle hackle. I just want to check the hackle barb length. I'm good with that. I don't think it will, but if it gets to here, that's too long. I gotta make it to there. Hmm. May need to choose a different feather. Well, no, you know what? I'm going to go with that feather I chose initially. And it's all right if it's a little long because the throat on this is going to be teal. And teal throat on this one is relatively long compared to others. So I am going to stick with this one. So we'll tie in the flat tinsel first. And then right up close next to that one. Is going to be the oval tinsel. When you tie in the oval tinsel, uh, you'll notice I've stripped away the outer sheathing and exposed the silk at the core. You want to tie in mostly on that. That'll save you a whole lot of bulk. And you also want to tie that right up against that flat on the near side. And then you'll tie the hackle in, which I'm just going to strip away the fluff on the base. I'm going to tie that in right up against that oval.
and then we'll just tie these back. And just put them in the material holder. is wrap all the way forward till we get to the front and, we'll, and then we'll tie in our purple floss I'll cut away the black thread for the moment. And we'll go ahead and lay our floss. We want each each wrap of floss to be touching. And take your time. There's no hurry. There's no rush on this. You know, if it's a fishing fly you're tying, then, you know, there's no need to be super neat. The fish aren't going to really care. But if this is for a frame or for, you know, a loved one, someone that you're tying it for, take your time with it. smooth wraps all the way around. Easy on the tension, you don't want to put too much tension on um, silk floss. This is Japanese silk floss by the way, um, the Kyoto brand. And depending on the fly and depending on the size of the body and how much floss I need to use, um, as you can see I put it on a bobbin spool. Putting it on a bobbin spool makes larger bodies much easier 
and you don't fray your thread you don't get your you know finger oils all over the, the silk um, using the bobbin method is you know it really does work very well and you do get a good result out of it especially when you're doing such a large body if you're doing such a large body like this trying to wrap a single strand of floss over and over and over um, it can create some fraying, it can create some discoloration, and you can wind up, you know, having kind of a, I'm not going to say a mess, but you wind up having a little something extra to deal with at the end. Whereas this, you can just clip it, burnish it, and move on to the next step. And we're not even going to clip it. We would just tie back in with the black thread. And just tie back over what you just did a little bit. There we go. I'll take a floss burnisher. Okay, like that, except I've got a strand up here. Okay, next we'll start with the silver flat tinsel. Keep these others held back for a few minutes. Tie that off. And then we'll follow suit with the oval. 
Now the reason you tie in the oval after they tie in the flat is so that way when you wrap the oval, the oval sits right along the edge of that flat tinsel. And if you can manage it, try to get, try to hold that oval tinsel so you can back off the thread, off of the flat tinsel, so you can tie them both in at the same time. That will save you on thread wraps and bulk. Next is our hackle. So now when you wrap your hackle, you want to try to use the back of the stem as you're wrapping. Have the back of the stem right up against that oval. Tells me this hack was going to be longer than I wanted. Very much so. Hmm. Let's finish it out and see how it looks. was a little longer than I would have liked. However, I don't have much selection for purple hackle. So this may wind up being about the best I'm going to get for this for this fly. So I'm going to continue forward and um, I hope I'm right. So next will be the teal throat. Selections here. Let's have a look at the length first. Teal is really quite beautiful, it's just very long fibered. So even a small feather could have long fibers on it.
And this one here is not exactly a large feather, but those fibers, as you can see, are quite long. Same with this one. This one might be a little more acceptable. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to go for this one. I'm going to try it. If I don't like it, I can always choose another. All right, so what we'll do is since we're going to wrap clockwise, pull the teal out to the tip, and right where that tip is, we're going to very carefully peel away the right side of the feather as you're looking at it. Very gently. And then we'll take this tip here. And we'll tie that in. And I'm going to fold that back keep that from coming out. Okay. And then we'll wrap and just make sure that we keep these feathers parallel to the hook shank as we wrap. Hmm, I'm gonna have to say that's a little too long. Yep, too long. That's a shame. It's going to be about the same length. That'll be better. Okay, so we'll strip away that one side.
and let's try this again. Definitely going to need a second feather on this one. That's a good one. Should match the length nice, nicely. Well, the second one may not actually be necessary, but I really want this to... Shoot. Well, need a new feather. Yep, I accidentally peeled away some of the wrong side. Um, yeah, so sometimes uh, if you want it a little bit thicker, like you can see right here, this throat's a little on the thin side. So I want to get uh, another feather in there just to thicken that up. I think that's close, but that side of the feather is just, if you look at this feather, it's not very straight. And I think that the curvature of those barbs is just going to not work well. It can be a long selection process. It's not always an immediate uh, thing. all over the place. off the other.
And again, keeping all the fibers parallel to the hook shank as you wrap. That's better. Okay. The underwing on this fly is uh, white tip turkey. Long white tip and some short. 